Hey guys, Angelo here. Welcome to another design tutorial. Today, I wanna to show you how to create an interactive button menu placed inside a scrolling frame in Adobe InDesign. In this lesson, I'll go over how to set up the buttons, link them to multi-state objects, as well as publish online. So let's get started. All right, so let's get started on creating our interactive menu buttons. As you can see on my screen here, I've set one up on the left-hand side with a vertical scroll. Now each button we click here will trigger the information, the name of the watch in this fictional watch company catalog, the price, as well as the description of the watch, and a separate multi-state object with each watch as you click through. It'll correspond with the button. I've set up a secondary page down below so we can get started. Now I am working on an A4 size page document set up with a web uh, spe specifications. So if you wanted to know how to do that, just go to file, new document, click on the web tab and select A4, okay? You can alter the columns if you want as well as the margins. Now for this project that I'm working on, I've set the margins to zero um, because I don't need margins. So I'm gonna grab the rectangle frame tool and cover the entire page. And I do want to change this color to a Pantone gray here. And I want to set the tint to 12. I'm just gonna lock that here. I'm gonna grab the rectangle frame tool once again and create another frame on the left. Now, I mentioned before, I am setting this document up as a vertical scroll, so I want it to scroll up and down. You can set the same type of uh, setup with a horizontal scroll. I'm going to change this to the same Pantone gray, and the tint will be 5%, so you get a nice contrast between the grays there. Now, the next step is bringing in each PSD image of the watch. I am going to drop a link in the description below. If you'd like to follow along with this specific tutorial, you can download the content and try it out for yourself. I'm going to bring this window over here and I have seven watches uh, PSD files. Now you could use PNG files as well as long as the background is removed. I'm just gonna click on the first one and then hold the shift key and click on the last. And I'm just gonna drag them onto my page. I'm just gonna move this back off. And you can see I've already named them previously. And so that's gonna make it easier as I'm putting them in. I'm just gonna drag off to the side here and drag them one individually at a time. And then we can resize them as we put them on the page. Now when you're putting them in initially, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can reorder them in the layers panel, which I'm gonna show you how to do in just a sec. And then we're gonna stack them from top to bottom in the order that we have them numbered. So there's just one more to go here. And some are gonna come in larger than the others, and that's okay. That's where you can take your time and make things fit a little bit better. I'm just gonna zoom in just a bit and in my layers panel, which I'm just gonna tear off and put to the side here. I'm gonna click on the first image, so watch one. And I'm gonna be using shift and command to do a lot of my resizing. So I'm gonna be scaling them and then positioning them somewhere in the middle of this uh, left side frame. And it's okay if it's not going to be perfect at the beginning. What we'll do is we'll use the alignment tools after to make sure that they're all um, aligned in the center. I'll bring number two in and again I'm just going to use shift and command. If you're on Windows it's shift control and then just drag one of the anchor points or the left uh, corner handles on the the frame. So that's pretty similar in size so I'm happy with that. I'm going to click on number three and again, I'm just gonna use my shift command and drag that in, align it to the center, and then we'll figure out the spacing in just a moment as well. It's more important to get these 
more similar in size. So a good a good rule of thumb is try to compare the faces of the watches um, to be more similar in size. Now this one's a lot bigger than this one, so maybe scale this one up just a little bit, just so the faces of the watches are, are close in size. Okay, let's click on four. And I'm gonna bring this one over. And again, it's easier if you bring in the text, I'm sorry, the image uh, boxes, the frames, closer to the watch as you're working and again I'm just gonna position that under the third shift command and just drag to um, to decrease the size you can also click on the donut um, the content grabber and you can do option command less than or greater than you can resize it that way so whatever whatever's more easier or you're more comfortable with I find a combination of the two is often very helpful for me. So at the beginning, I'll use shift command to scale it to roughly around the size that I want. And then I'll use the content grabber with the option command greater less than to kind of fine tune. Okay, so this is watch five. Let me make that fit inside the frame. And again, shift command, scale it down. Now I want to get, how many watches did I get in here? So I got four watches and then two that will be um, off the page and you'll have to scroll to view those last two. So I may be pulling this entire uh, setup off to the side on the pasteboard so I can work from there because I'm running out of real estate here. So, so let's do that. Now I'm using this guide here, this guide that I have set up here to snap the frames on. So it's good to set up guides as well. I cover on how to set up guides in previous tutorials if you wanna check those out. Okay, so let's go ahead. What I'm gonna do is lock these two frames just so they don't get in the way. I'm just gonna pull these off to the side for now because I'm gonna need a little bit more space. Actually, what I'll do is I'll even shrink them down a bit just to give me a little bit more space to work here on the pasteboard. So utilize your pasteboard space too if you if you need to do this, okay? So let's click on the sixth image here. And again, use your handles to make the frame as close as possible to the content within that frame. So in this case, it's the watch. All right, and shift command, to scale that down. And we got one more here. I'm gonna move it to the very bottom. Shift Command, scale it down. Move it to the right a bit. So once, once you get this into this frame here, position it in the frame, then you can start working with the spacing as well. So let's go ahead, I want to maybe shrink this down a bit and then we can bring it back up in size. Okay, so I have it in here, and I do want um, four watches to appear, and then you're gonna have to scroll to see the other two. So let's go ahead, I might have to go back here. Okay, so that's good. I'm gonna bring them in, and I'm gonna start spacing them out now, okay? And we can use our alignment tools here so in your control panel, with them all selected, make sure that you have it aligned to the selection, not the page. And let's center the horizontal centers. And then let's let's go ahead and distribute the vertical centers. Now that's a little tight there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eyeball it on my own. And this is the part where it's kind of fine tuning. We'll get to the fun part in just a sec of actually making these interactive. But making sure that these are just the way you want them is, it to, to me, is just as important. Okay, so I'm gonna bring that in. And I'm just using my left and right arrow keys to make sure that these are spaced out the way I want. Now this one's off the page, it's okay. 
you could still maneuver it. Now, because the watches are different sizes as well, the distribution is not going to be accurate. Okay. So this is where you have to kind of go in and see what works. Just use, use your, you know, judgment on, okay, is that enough space there? Do I need a little bit more nudge, nudge? That's the way to do it. Now this doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to show you the concept, but that, that works for me now. And what we can do now is actually go ahead and put these watches inside of what will become our scrolling frame. So inside a container. All right, so let's add these to a container, which will become our scrolling frame. But before we do that, we have to group all the images together. So what I'll do is just select all of them. You can do that also in the, in the layers panel here, and then just do command G or go up to object and group. Either one will work. So you can see here now, all of them are contained inside a group and that's good. What I want to do next is before I cut them, because we have to cut them and then paste them into our container, I want to have the container roughly the size that I want. So let's move this down a bit. So something like that is good. And with my rectangle frame tool, I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag a frame around all the watches here. And you're going to have it stop where you want on the, where the scroll, where you want the scroll to end. And this can be changed after as well. So let's just set it to that for now. And what I'll do is click anywhere to select the grouped watches, command X or edit cut, click on the container frame, right click, paste into. Now that pastes everything inside of this container. You can see if I move the container, the group elements also move with it. If I extend the bottom part of this, you can see that there's more watches down below the two, right? So let's see how that looks without the guides on. I'm just gonna move this down a bit. That's the beauty of this. You can adjust the, the, um, the container how you want it as well, right? So if you're not happy with other things, you can double click, double click to drive into each watch as well. You're gonna need to do that to set up the buttons. Also, it's important to know to set your buttons up after you put it in the container. Once you group it and put it in the container, anything that you've done previously in terms of adding interactivity will not carry over. So you'll have to repeat that process. Try to avoid that. Perfect, so now that I have that in here, I can go ahead and start adding the interactivity. I'm just gonna move this off to the side and for this portion, we're gonna need buttons and forms. So I'm gonna tear that off as well. And it's important, let's go ahead and set up the buttons with no action as of yet, but at least we know we have the, the buttons set up. So I'm gonna double click on this first one and I wanna set it up as a button and this will be called watch button uh, one, how about zero point or zero one is good. And the event will be on release or tap. And one thing I want to do uh, in addition to setting up this button is adding a rollover appearance. So I'm going to click on rollover and I'm going to double click to drive into that selection. And while holding shift and command, I'm also going to increase the size of that ever so slightly. You don't want to, you don't want to blow it up too big. So just something subtle that when you roll over it, maybe the, the image grows a bit, pops out a little bit, and then I'm going to set it on a click. So it goes back to its state when you click. So there's normal, nor that'll be the rollover appearance and then click when you click it, it it'll go down and then the, the triggers will happen as well. So let's go ahead and click the second one. Again, you're going to have to double click, double click to drive into each button. I'm going to turn that into a button. Watch two or watch button zero two. And great. So we have a normal appearance. I'm going to click on roll over, double click to drive into that. Hold shift command and just drag out maybe the center point. So you can see you have normal, 
rollover, click. Click just goes back to its original state, okay? So that's good. Just make sure that once you've set those up, that you click normal again. All right, I just wanna make sure that I have that set up the way I want. So I lost the button name there. So I wanna make sure that that is watch two or watch button two, zero two, perfect. And this should be zero, zero one, good. I'm gonna click on that third one, turn that into a button, and this will be watch button zero three. And again, we're not adding actions yet because we have to set up the multi-state objects, which we'll do in just a few moments. I'm going to click rollover, double click into the selection, and I'm going to, you know, you know what's happening, I, I'm not getting out of that. Okay, so let's do that again, button, watch button zero three see what what's happening is if i go if i don't move on if i don't hit enter um and then just go click roll over that naming convention won't stick so that's that's something that i was just bypassing on accident so just be careful of that that once you hit the once you rename it just press enter or return to move on all right so roll over double click and this will be um so shift command and just increase it ever so slightly. Again, use your judgment on what you think is good. And then select click. So you have a normal rollover click. I'm just gonna finish these up and then we'll move on and set up the multi-state objects next. Okay, so now that the buttons are set up, we can go ahead and start adding the multi-state objects. Down below, I have seven pieces of information to go along with each watch. So there's the name, the price, and a little description. If it makes it easier for you, just add a numbering structure up top. But what I also do is reorder them in my layers panel. I group each element and rename them. So you can see they're in the order that I want from top to bottom. And before I move them onto that top page, what I'll do is select all of them. And I'm gonna be using my alignment uh, left edges and I'm going to align the vertical centers. So now I know that they're all together and I'm gonna bring them up and position them on one of these guides, maybe something like so. I'll have it sitting like that or even a little bit higher. Maybe the top of the the watch name sitting on the bottom of that guide. And you can see if I turn these off, okay, they all make sense. So Windsor, the Dalton, Pelton, and so on. So I'll just leave Windsor on for now. And what I wanna do is turn each one of these groups, actually all of them. So you wanna make sure that you have them all selected each group will be its own state. So whenever you want something to be triggered, um, make sure that you're grouping everything together. So the name, the price, the description, group that so that when we click the button on that watch, it'll trigger everything together, okay? So that's what I did here. And what I'll do is just select all of them, open my object states panel, drag that over. Object states, again, can be found in window, interactive, and object states. So can buttons and forms, which we used earlier. Okay, so in my object states, I'm going to create or convert the selection, so everything I have selected into a multi-state object. And you can see the naming convention carries over into that multi-state object. So that's it's important to rename them in your layers panel, but you can also rename them here in your states if you forgot to do so. And you can also move these inside the multi-state object. So if you wanted Windsor at the bottom, you could do that. So this is this kind of works as a layers kind of same concept, but an important part is actually renaming the object name. So this will be watches main images, okay? That's important because when you're setting up those buttons, you can find that multi-state object very quickly. So now that we have that set up 
and just so I show you, every time I click on one, it'll trigger the next one, okay? Not trigger, but I'm just moving up and down that list. We haven't triggered anything just yet. Okay, next up is bringing in the, the watches again. So you have to bring those watches in two times in a layout. So what I'll do is again, just drag them onto my page. And I'm just gonna maybe do the same kind of thing where I'm dragging and then drag. And then this part here, much like we did at the beginning, we'll have to resize them. So they're similar in size, okay? Now you could just click and plop it in there, but a lot of these images are pretty big and you'll have to do a lot of scaling after. So it's important, you know, just stack them on top of each other for now. We can always turn off the layer and then work that way. So I think that's all of them. And if I click on my layers panel here, you could see seven is at the top. Now I'm gonna have to reverse these because I want one at the top. So one, and then just bring everything up. And that'll make it easier as you're working as well. So I'm gonna turn off, it's, it's much easier to work to turn everything off and then base everything else off your first selection. So if I want this size to be a little bit bigger, Maybe have it sit somewhere in the middle. How did I have it up top? Yeah, maybe hanging over. Maybe that's a little too big. And a good rule of thumb as well is why not bring a secondary guide down and then you can have everything, if it works, sit on that guide down below. I just want the watches to be a little bit more uh, larger in size vertically. So so that, that's a good size there. Let's click on the two and I'll, I'll have that appear. And then what I'll do is just size it to somewhere similar. Okay. And then let's turn off one. Maybe make this a little bit bigger. And then how does that in comparison? Yeah, pretty good. And then what, what I'll do at the end is actually have them all aligned to the center as well. And again, these, like, they don't have to be perfectly aligned or perfectly the same size. Again, the watches themselves are different sizes, right? So you're never gonna have them the same size. But in saying that, you should have them very similar. Right, and I'm again, I'm just using my right and left arrow key to get them somewhere close, okay? So what I'll do is I'll bring that over a bit. Now that frame, again, is too large. It's always easier if you, you know, shrink down the frame and then use your scaling shift command or shift control if you're on Windows. That's pretty good in size, so I'm just gonna bring that over, okay? And let's go ahead and turn that. I could start turning some of these off as well. This one's a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna use Option Command to start and then bring that down. Let's bring in the frame a bit. Now this one has a much smaller face than the other watches. So let's bring that over. That looks pretty, pretty close, let's see. I might bring, move it down a bit. Okay, good, let's move on. Let's shrink down this watch here, the frame. And then what I'll do is just drag it over. I'm just gonna shrink it down just a bit. Again, you're just matching it to what you've already done, right? The best you can. Just match it the best you can. And then line it up the best you can. We have one more to go here. So the key is always make the frame fit around the content first. Use shift command to scale it down and then drag it over the area. Now that looks a little small, so I'm just gonna bump it up a bit and then just kind of have it somewhere where it's lined up. Now what I'll do is I'll turn them all on, 
select all of them and let's go ahead and align the horizontal centers. Again, that's pretty close enough that when I'm, sh when I'm scrolling through them, it'll be just fine as well. So now that I have them all selected in the order that I want, so you wanna make sure that all these um, blue check boxes are, are, are highlighted or turned on. Simply just dragging over them with your selection tool will, will ensure that. Go to your object states and then go ahead and convert that also into a multi-state object. So you can see that those um, work as well. There's one that was kind of kind of off shift too much. Let's see. No, I think they're all pretty good. If you ever want to go in and maneuver any of these, click on the state itself, then double click and you can just move each one individually. So if you're not happy with how one is aligned to another, yeah, just click on three and then double click to drive into that state. And then you can maybe move it left or right how you want it, okay? I'm not gonna worry about that too much for this lesson. I am going to change the object name to watches main, I see it, this is the watches main images. Um, let's just call it watch images two. Let's go back to that first object, uh, multi-state object. This is not images. I have to change that to information. So watch, watch, watches info is good. So watches info and watches images too. That, those are the multi-state object names. Now let's go ahead back to our menu and trigger those buttons. So both of these multi-state objects appear when we click on him. So if you recall early in the lesson, we went ahead and set up these images as buttons, but what we didn't do is add the action to have it trigger each one of these multi-state objects. So we're gonna do that now. I'm gonna zoom in a bit and click on that frame, which is the container, double click to drive into it, and then just double click again to drive into that first image. You can see watch button one. Let's add an action for it to go to state. Now you can see as a default, it sets it up as the first multi-state object, which, which is the watch's info. That's the first multi-state object we created. That is fine. And we can leave the state to go to Windsor because that's the first watch. I'm going to add a secondary go to state action. Only this time, I want it to go to watch images two. And we're also going to leave that on state one. So now when we click this image, it's now a button. It'll trigger both the, the information and the image. Let's go ahead and continue on and do it to the rest. So double click, double click, add an action, go to state, watches info, but we have to change watches info from Windsor to Dalton. Okay, let's add a secondary action change the object to watch images two, and change the state from one to two. Let's keep going. Double click, double click, click on the actions, go to state, watches info is fine. Pelton, add a secondary state of go to state. And this is going to be watch images two, and this will be state three, which is um, the Pelton watch, okay? Let's do another one here. Double click, double click, watch button four. Let's add the action of go to state. This will be the Essex watch. Let's add a secondary action of go to state. And the state will be Essex. I'm sorry, we have to change that from watch watches info to watch images too and that is the fourth watch okay i'm going to finish these up and then we'll publish this online and i'll show you how it looks in a web browser and i'll also show you how to hyperlink to a website if you are directing viewers to uh, the content online All right, so now that the buttons have been set up and they've been triggered to both multi-state objects, we have to add the scrolling action to the container 
we created early on in the tutorial. So I mentioned using N5. Again, you can find the link in the description below on how to acquire the extension for N5. I'm gonna click on the container. I'm gonna zoom in for this. I'm gonna click on the container here and I have the N5 drop down, and I want to go to interactive widgets. And so some of these are, if you have the basic plan, some of these actions are free to use. Um, N5 is subscription based, so a lot of the, the features in here are uh, subscription based, so you won't have access to them unless you subscribe. Um, but one of the cool features that you can use is scrolling frames. So I'm gonna click that and right now the scroll direction on my container on the frame is off and I want to set it to vertical. Now you can hide the scroll indicators so the, 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 the indicator that appears once it's um, published. I'll leave it on for now. If it becomes a nuisance you can always turn it off um, but it's a good indicator of people knowing that that is a scrolling frame otherwise um, you know people may not know as a user experience. So before we publish this online, I do want to test it out in the EPUB preview window just to make sure that all the buttons are working. So there's the indicator. Right now I have it on and it's not interfering with the watches. So I think it's okay. I'll show you how it looks if it's off. You can see if I hover over each watch button, you get that subtle uh, appearance that we set up where it pops out a bit. And then I can click, 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 click to get through the entire uh, menu, scroll down. Now these aren't spaced out great, so I'd go back and revisit that, but you get the concept here on how a scrolling frame works. I'm gonna turn off the indicator, publish it online, and show you how it looks in a web browser. Okay, so to publish online, I'm just gonna click on the share button here, and let's select publish online. Now this is a three page document, but I'm only gonna publish the one we've just worked on. So select range and just type in two. You can also select all if that's what you wanted. And I'm just going to select publish. So InDesign is gonna do its thing. This is a pretty big document, so it's gonna take a few more seconds than normal to, to upload. So I'm gonna select view document that's going to open up my web browser and let's have a look at the buttons and how the menu appears. By the way, I did take off the indicator scroll, so I think it looks better. Just a cleaner look and I can scroll through these, no problem. And I can scroll down to see the other two. As a final step, I'd like to show you how to set up a hyperlink button, taking viewers from your InDesign project to a website where they could learn more about your product or even purchase it. So I have a learn more button here and I'm going to convert it from an object to a button and I'm going to rename it online button and the action the action is going to be go to URL. I'm going to paste the project the InDesign project that I just published the URL from that into this URL field and that's it. You've set up a URL button. You can see the button is activated. I'm going to click the EPUB preview window to test out the button. And you can see if I hover over it, it's active. I'm going to click on that and it should bring up the website or the project that we just worked on in InDesign. So that's a cool and simple way of adding interactive menu buttons inside a scrolling frame in Adobe InDesign. If you enjoyed this tutorial, if you found it helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get notified when new lessons have been posted. And if you'd like to learn more about interactive design, go ahead and click the playlist above.